Well, hello, YouTube. Uh, after finally getting used to my own voice on videos, I've decided maybe it's time that I made or attempted to make a video of what I use for my moto logging or blogging or vlogging or what have you. So, Let's proceed. Is the crash helmet that I'm is my current favourite for riding on the Harley um, and motor logging. The main reason is because it's uh, one of these flip lid ones, so I can actually turn it into a half face lid, and then quite easily click it back down lock it into place and then it's a full face helmet. My camera of choice is the Drift Ghost S as in this one and it clips on to the side of my lid there. I prefer that because as you can see it's fairly low profile, fairly innocuous um, and I can then plug my microphone in like so and I'm ready to go. On the other side I've got my Senna which clips on like so. My Senna is for radio, telephone and communicating with other riders um, but now the area one stick down. Oh, there you go. Um, I don't use it. It's too fiddly, too faffy, and so that is it. That's my setup. Now, if I open up the chin strap bit again and actually move towards the camera, what I've got is for my Senna. It comes with a boom mount microphone, which I've run through here and um, inside the phone. So for my microphone for the drift, I've run that all around the lining, inside, around, and I've cable tied it to my boom mount. So actually I can position that the boom mount actually helps keep the microphone in position um, and I've got the two microphones so that's it that is how I moto log so that's that camera done I can take that one off now to go. sometimes you'll see I've got picture in picture uh, of a camera facing me that I use the little ghost stealth um, the reason I use that one for the picture on me is because it doesn't come with microphone input it has got a mic built in I think yes it does um, my word of advice for any motor logger that's using a drift is whatever you use whether you, well, you can't with this one um, but with the ghost don't try and motor log without the microphone. Even if you're not going to do a voiceover, uh, the wind noise is chronic. So you either have to turn the microphone fully off and then you have no sound whatsoever. Um, or, well, um, plug in a microphone or glue some foam over the microphone that's built in. Um, but the best way by far is to use one of the drift microphones or even a cheap um, copy off of eBay. Just plug it in and either root it under your seat or near your exhaust or just anywhere out of wind. That's my advice for that. But yeah, that one I use for when I'm doing picture in picture. Um, and on my bike, I've actually got a remote control. I can pair both these cameras and a third one um, to the remote control so actually switching that remote control on switches both cameras on simultaneously 
If you don't do that, it can be a right pain in the ass to line your video up when you come to post editing. Um, it can be an absolute nightmare. So that is my little stealth. Um, what I'm going to be doing in the next month or so, hopefully, is actually I will be positioning my cameras on the roadside and actually doing some ride buys. Um, for that, I've got a little Joby um, tripod that is actually magnetic. So I can prove that on the side of my, my book. There you go. So that's stuck to there. Now that wouldn't hold the weight of the camera, um, but it is magnetic. And then I've actually got a larger one as well. And what you can't see is the tripod that I'm recording using, and that's a, a full SLR um, strength Manfrotto, however you say it. Now, if I'm not video logging, helmet of choice is the HGC. It is mega light, really is a light lid, and it's actually really comfy. Um, but on this one, I have actually got a bracket for my camera, like so, actually fixed to the visor on this one. Um, but I haven't got any uh, microphone routed through it so if I was using this one and recording then I wouldn't be doing voiceover. So collect crash helmets a little bit so this has got nothing to do with video logging but while I'm recording um, I thought I might as well show you. I can use for moto logging is this one it's the Shoei whatever um, yeah, I don't know what it is. Um, and this one, I can actually, if I could get that out, I can actually plug my drift into there. And I've also, on this one, done exactly the same as the other lid. I've got the center fixed, a spare bracket with the boom mic. And I've actually, with this one, it looks like I've only got the one but I actually rooted, I took the foam off and put the microphone inside the one piece of foam. So actually that is two microphones in one. Now, I don't use this one very much. I bought it when I had my um, Triumph Explorer because it's an adventure style crush helmet, but it is seriously uncomfortable. It is the most uncomfortable crash helmet I think I own. Um, it costs a lot of money and I will probably get into using it, but for the time being, I want to be comfortable. So, I mean, it looks a stunning lid, but looks ain't everything. Uh, Arai, it's actually the Schwantz replica. This crash helmet is probably 15 to 20 years old. Um, so I have decommissioned it now. Part of the reason I've decommissioned it is because I met Kevin Schwantz and this lid is signed and I haven't protected it. It's so. another Kevin Schwantz, the more modern Chaser 5. Um, this one's brand spanking new. I bought it when I met Kevin Schwantz on an open evening and again I made the mistake of getting it signed. Is it a mistake? No, because it's Kevin Schwantz. But before, before the latest one, the um, Guy Martin replica, um, never ever worn that lid um, because it's the, the cheaper end of the AGV scale. Um, and I do like my head, so um, I will use it. I think this one is a stunning design. It's his pink design. Again, I've never worn this one. In fact, the visor protector is still on there, black visor. Um, this one I probably will use because it's a slight upgrade to the, the cheaper one. Um, and it's got lots of decent air vents. So this crash helmet, I probably will use in time. Then I've got the original Guy Martin lid. 
Um, it's a K3. I bought it second hand off of eBay um, because at the time they were really, really hard to get. Um, and this one's hardly had any use. However, since I've had it, I've actually had it signed in two locations by Guy Martin himself, which is quite a rarity because Guy is well known for not wanting to sign things. Um, but yeah, he signed that one. His crash helmet is a bell. Um, <laughs> I don't know what that bit's for. I really don't know. There's some weird thing. It must be to do with um, some sort of communication device. Um, I think it's a stunning design. I think it's better than the current Arai design, which costs £800. Um, this one, incidentally, was about £169. And it's actually got the transition visor. So in sunlight, that visor will go dark and in the dark it will be light. Um, as you can see, again, another crash helmet I've never worn, but I will. A John Kaczynski lid. This was my original most expensive lid. It's probably, what is it, 20, 25 years old. Um, it would have been about 350 quid back then. It is the most comfortable crash helmet I've ever, ever owned. And it's the one crash helmet that has saved my life. As you can see there, I came off a TDR 250 um, and I scooted down the road on my head. Um, so this crash helmet, although it smells really old and dank, um, is probably my most important crash helmet to me. Um, it tells a story of my biggest bike accident I've had um, and it's just a crash helmet that I will never part with. That's it. Um, any questions then fire away uh, but I just want to thank absolutely everybody that has subscribed likes my videos i even thank those people that have disliked my videos um, because it means you have viewed them in part um, all those that have commented i'd love more comments i'd love to know what you'd like to see more of um, my channel is very young it's growing it is a mix of motorcycle logging blogging and drone footage um, and that will continue. Um, I'm not going to dedicate a separate channel to each um, because I'll never be one of the giants when it comes to uh, my channel. So I'd rather keep them all into one place. I'm up to 139 subscribers. Um, I'm up to 98 videos. I've actually got a... My 100th video is ready to go. And that is a 20 minute, that's the Isle of Man by drone in 20 minutes. So it's pretty much all of my 2016 flight locations um, combined into one video of about 20 minutes long. Quite pleased with that one. Uh, and I haven't released it yet because I want to make that my 100th video. And this video that I'm making now will be the 99th. So by the end of this week, I'll be on 100 videos. I've got currently 139 subscribers. All of my videos are up to about 98,000 views. So I'm nearing 100,000 views for all my videos as a total. Uh, my main videos that I have the biggest success with are my test ride videos and those five videos total uh, si over 60,000 of my views. So you can see my test ride videos are my, by far and away my most popular and today one of my videos actually hit 20,000 views which I'm really proud of. Um, I will try and do a lot more test ride videos but I need to try and um, speak to people on 
the Isle of Man and see if there's anyone, any of the dealers that are happy for me to do some test rides and videoing. Um, it would benefit them, hopefully, um, but equally it will benefit me because that's where I get most of my views. Uh, but I'm going to carry on as I'm going. What I'm, I want to do is I want to do some sort of um, prize giveaway. Um, probably to encourage, I'll try and set it up so that when I hit up 200 subscribers, um, but equally from then on, every extra 100 subscribers, I'll, I'll do another giveaway. It won't be anything major. It might be a Isle of Man TT t-shirt, a mug, um, things related to the Isle of Man because that's where I am. So again, thank you all. Um, I know I say I'm a lot. Um, <laughs> shit, I just said it again. I will edit some of those out. Um, oh, bugger. Right, okay, over, done. See you soon.